my dear friends, and welcome back to another video. So today we have some more exclusive footage for The Mandalorian Season 3, courtesy of a new TV spot posted on Star Wars social media. The two main frames that have everyone talking are of what looks to be Tatooine. Fans think this is probably Mos Eisley, as we see Pelimoto's hangar at the bottom. What's really interesting is that Mandalorians are using Tatooine as a sanctuary, as some sort of base, probably granted to them by Boba Fett. Him explaining his lineage in The Mandalorian Season 2 in Chapter 14 was very important for the direction of this story, because ultimately, he is a true Mando. His father Jango Fett was a foundling, who was taken under the wing of Justin Muriel, and despite Boba Fett being a clone, he is very proud of his father's legacy, and some fans have even said, maybe he should be the Mandalore. I disagree, I think it's still going to be Din or Bo-Katan, but Boba's connections to the homeworld through his father are legitimate. In this epic frame of Mandalorians using their jetpack, fans think they've spotted Boba Fett in the background, behind Din Djarin, past Fisla, and what looks to be another blue Mando, maybe Axe Woves, we do see a green-looking Mandalorian, which is most likely Boba himself. Now, as I covered the other day, Empire Magazine released a poster full of helmets of familiar and new Mandalorians, and fans thought they spotted Boba's helmet on the bottom right because it had the iconic dent. But now that the full issue has released and we have it in full colour, it's bad news. It's a different Mando with orange paint. This is not Boba Fett, but it doesn't mean that Boba's not going to be in it though. We are going to Tatooine, he's a big part of this story, and as I say, he might be the reason Mandos are able to have a base of operations on the desert world. He is Daimyo after all. And it's been great to see Lucasfilm consider the Book of Boba Fett as such an integral part of this story, of the general Mandalorian journey. In the couple of recap videos they posted, they include it so prominently, and when you think about it, it is so important to acknowledge how interwoven that first Boba season was for the overall narrative, most obviously with the reunion of Mando and Grogu, which is a controversial topic. Now, the other day, I covered Jon Favreau's comments about that decision, and even he acknowledged that some fans who didn't see Boba might be confused, and even if they do include it as a recap at the beginning, there is an argument to be made about some fans being confused, but as I've seen pointed out by some folks, the book of Boba Fett was wildly popular, more popular than people realise, and it even had a higher viewership than Mando Season 2 in its finale. Maybe we're overestimating how many fans don't actually know, and I do acknowledge there are fans who, for whatever reason, didn't watch the book of Boba Fett, even if they're Mandalorian fans, but for those who didn't see it, a quick recap at the start, plus what Grief Karga said in that exclusive clip from Chapter 17, where he's also confused and didn't explains it, might be enough. Now, the book of Boba Fett generally was a bit of a weird one. I loved Boba's four and a half episodes, and the two and a half that dealt with Grogu and Mando, but put together it did feel a bit inconsistent, but I've come to really appreciate what the show did for the future of what we call the Mandoverse. It gave Boba's story a rebirth and new direction going forward, which probably comes into play in season three. We also got the reunion between Din and Grogu, which according to Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, was always meant to happen. We also got the interaction between Ahsoka and Luke, the son of a former master, which should come into playing the Ahsoka show, and the setup for the restoration of Mandalore through the Amra, not to mention Din's quest to atone for his sins, and where that's going to lead in Season 3. In the grand scheme of this story, the Book of Boba Fett was crucial for what's to come, and we're probably going to realise that more after Season 3. Very excited for this, Chapter 17 drops in just a week and a half's time. This is the way. And with all of this speculation and anticipation for Boba Fett, I really want to see Fennec Shand again too. I mean, if Boba appears, she will as well. But I want to learn more about Ming-Na Wen's character. How did she become a master assassin? Where did she come from? What's her story? For such a badass character, we want to learn more. Any such backstory could be explored in A Book of Boba Fett Season 2. Maybe in the same way that Boba had flashbacks, she could as well. Wouldn't that be awesome? And so now, my dear friends, The Hollywood Reporter have revealed that Star Wars is going to unveil the future of the film side of things at Star Wars Celebration in London in just a couple of months, this coming April. They also mentioned that Taika Waititi is still working on his film, and so is Damon Lindelof, the latter is slated to helm the 2025 Star Wars movie, and that one is said to be directed by Miss Marvel's Obeyed Shanoi. This is all part of Bob Iger's plan to redirect Disney in the right direction, as he pledges to quote, be better at creating releases and financial discipline. But it is worth noting that just because things are going to be announced at Celebration doesn't mean they'll actually come to fruition. As we know, Lucasfilm has a record of overpromising. But no matter what, come hell or high water, they are desperate to get a film out in 2025. That is a priority. So fingers crossed, let's see what happens.
In other Star Wars news, Ahsoka might be getting a season two. According to a new listing, it's no longer a limited series. Same goes with Skeleton Crew. And this also goes back to the financial thing. Milking Ahsoka for more than one season makes financial sense. A lot of fans are going to be tuning in. You've got Clone Wars fans, Rebels fans, fans of the Mandalorian, the general Star Wars fandom too. I would say this is going to be just as big, if not bigger than the hype for the Kenobi show. A few days ago, on February the 8th, Disney's first quarter earnings report for 2023 offered a first look at what the year has in store for its beloved franchises and intellectual properties. A small detail nestled amongst the paperwork suggests the Ahsoka series is going to be more than one season. They put in brackets season one, but take this with a pinch of salt because they did the same thing with the Kenobi show and the Book of Boba Fett, both of which have not been announced to have a season two, but those could still come. In the case of Skeleton Crew and the Ahsoka show, they're both slated for 2023 and both might have more than one season. And in case you missed it, I covered the latest Skeleton crew news in yesterday's video. Please go check it out if you haven't done so and if you want to. And so finally, my dear Maglorians, the male lead on the acolyte Lee Jung Jae, who stars alongside Amanda Stenberg, who you might know from Squid Game, has thrown shade at the Star Wars filming experience. Speaking with all K-pop, the acolyte star compared the efficiency with which Squid Game was filmed on how the acolyte is progressing. He noted, filming sets in Korea are actually more efficient. He continued, there are aspects I'm learning from here as well. The acolyte is currently filming here in the UK and is set for a 2024 release, really awesome stuff. And so finally guys, another clip from my interview with Paul Sun Hung Lee about the snow clones in The Mandalorian. Enjoy. I've got to ask you, because you've, yep. you've kind of touched upon it. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of poking around for um, <laughs> a few clues because you kind, of, you kind of hinted at a couple of things that are too tempting as a Star Wars fan not to ask you. You said you're a fan of The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. After Chapter 12, The Siege, we saw those Snoke tanks, or that's what we in the fandom like to call them. Do mm -hmm. you think... Um, there's a bit more of that kind of uh, Imperial Remnant cloning in Season 3? Well, you know, we see in the trailer, Dr. Pershing is there. And I'm saying yes. this as a fan. I have some insider knowledge <laughs> as to what's going on, but, but just in my scenes. Uh, and, um, you know, I, as a fan, I, I speculate too. I'm in a weird sort of position because I'm actually in the show, but I don't... Nobody tells me anything, basically. So, And that's one of the hard, fast rules that I always... That I, I keep with... Uh, with my relationship with like, for, for example, with Dave Filoni, outside of work, I never talk about Star Wars with him. It's just like, I'm not gonna, no. It's like, if if, if you're like a, a, a ear, nose and throat doctor, the last thing you wanna do is go home and look at your family's ear, nose and throat type thing, right? So uh, for, so I never talk Star Wars with Dave or, or, or John or anybody. It's just like, that is, they've got enough on their plates and I, you know, so I don't want to bother them with that. So as a fan, I see this the stuff that they pump out, and I can theorize as well. And you look at that, and you kind of go, "Well, they, they show Doctor Pershing. We know because of of in season one, he's got the uh, uh, he's got the the, the cloner label from the Kamen, and right? And uh, so you know that's that's what they did. You see the Snoke tanks, right? I'm just going to use that same term because you know it's like calling Grogu Baby Yoda. Everybody uses it, so it doesn't mean I'm necessarily confirming or denying any of that stuff so everybody out there don't get me in trouble take everything i say with a grain of salt because i'm i'm speculating as a fan as well but i think it's safe to say that there's there's i mean his character's there for a reason 